game animation sample for Unreal 5.5 has been released and it has a bunch of new features. So if you're trying to install it from the Epic Games Launcher, you have to make sure that you have the updated version. So if you go to your fab library and type uh, game animation sample, you see it here. If 5.5 doesn't show up under the I, then you can select the down here and say remove local content and that should refresh it so that you can get the 5.5 version. So you create a project and once you have the project created, you'll be presented with some changes from the previous version. A couple immediately noticeable ones is you've got a little bit of terrain over here with uneven ground, which implies that there's gonna be foot placement modifications so that we get some foot IK. And then you'll notice right here, press and hold jump to catch ledges while falling. So you have a new little obstacle course right here. And this one does have sprint and crouch built in along with a state machine based approach. So it's a less comp compute intensive, requires less animations to get it done. It uses a blend stack. We'll look into that and show what that thing does. And also um, a new camera with three different uh, distinct modes. So I'm going to go ahead and let's, let's get into it. So for starters, we'll hit play. We have our character right here. You still have the aim mode. C will go into crouch and it's really smooth. You have running and if you hold shift, he'll go into a sprint. And the enter sprint is really dynamic. It really looks good. So here, I'll hit the middle mouse to go out of strafe mode. And so you can see what the run looks like when he goes into a sprint. And the foot placement is working pretty well. So you'll notice he's got feet on ground. Everything looks good. One thing I will say, there's some stuff that needs to be fixed. Like, you know, he's running on a on an incline. Doesn't look great. The, the animation should be adjusted for it. He should be moving his uh, center of gravity and the legs are coming up a little high especially if you were to sprint it looks just really ridiculous at that point the legs are just clearly coming up too high um, same running up a hill just looks like the plot um, but yeah for a generic system that kind of handles all kinds of environments and does that kind of stuff this is quite quite excellent so we'll go ahead and test out the holding the space bar while jumping okay there we go so sure enough, I hold the space bar. Very cool. So that worked great. And obviously you have all the old, all the old features are still there. Um, and then that, that's really the major change. If you move your scroll wheel, so if I take it up, it'll put me in a closed camera mode, um, which is pretty cool. And if I take it back, it'll get me into a wide camera mode. So you kind of have everything from adventure game to more of a close third, per third person shooter. Um, it works quite well. A lot of people are reporting some bugs along with that, trying to add that camera to a scene. Try, you know, there's just a bunch of uh, issues that hopefully Epic is going to address because I'm hearing a lot of uh, reports of browser crashes and things like that. Now let's get into the widget. So if you go to the view controls, You'll see that uh, we have, um, I'll go pull these over. So you've got left shift for sprint, you have C to crouch, um, and I just talked about the scroll wheel. And that's pretty much it for the new stuff on the control side of the house. And then we'll bring in the game animation widget so you can see what this thing can do. I'll go ahead and just dock it here. One really cool feature is the state machine setup. If I turn this on, he's no longer using motion matching. It's actually using a, a blend stack. Um, it still works. Go ahead and go out to a wider camera so you can kind of see it do its thing. It works quite well and really doesn't have a lot of foot sliding. It has a lot of natural movements. I will say the main difference if you watch as I'm rotating around here like that, if I switch off of this and go back to motion matching, you'll notice he has a little bit of a more um, natural. See, he's, he's banking, but he's also um, actually doing a plant. Whereas in the state machine setup, he doesn't uh, doesn't plant it. So there is some stuff where it just looks more natural um, in the motion matching version, but for something that's much simpler, it requires a lot less animation coverage. This is really worth looking into it. I'm, my assumption is this is gonna be more compute efficient than the motion matching solution, but that is, I'm kind of just guessing. But even still, the motion matching is incredibly compute efficient and you have level of detail. So if you want, um, background characters, really far away characters. So you can use quite a austere, you know, very small motion matching database, which just make it take a lot less compute. The sprint stops 
are just awesome. Um, yeah, the animation coverage, these these animations are truly uh, top tier. There are some problems with that game camera. Like, like if you sprint um, towards the camera, you know, not strafe mode, you can sometimes run the can't run the player out of view, but that's just a function of how uh, the delay of the camera. But everything just looks uh, better than the 5.4 version. You see, you got a couple. It got some leg crossing there um, in the state machine version. You know, so I'll do it again. Depending on how, when you turn, there it is. You get you can get some. You know, there it is. Legs will move through each other, whereas in the motion matching version. You really shouldn't see that. Let's see, he's walking. These are actually pulling animations, so you're going to get a nice, much more natural movement where the legs don't cross through each other. But for 99% of the cases, and based on the complexity of your game, the uh, the new version might be exactly what you're looking for. And they have this cool feature where you can do them side by side. You can kind of get a feel for what the the difference is between the two systems. You'll notice that there's some jitter in the state machine setup, but again, I'm also putting it through uh, a pretty challenging set of maneuvers that don't really make a lot of who's doing that, right? That's not, those aren't natural game behaviors that are going to really come up in an actual game situation. A lot of progress. Everything looks smoother. Everything looks better than it did before. So beyond the bugs that hopefully they're going to be fixing that are causing the editor to crash, hasn't happened to me, but um, I'm seeing a lot of crash reports uh, on Discord from other people that this is affecting. So in 5.5, the game animation sample is fully replicated. So if you go down here and change your number of players, and I just say play as client. We now have two characters. Let me open, let me go grab the, uh, this one. Sure enough, it looks replicated very well. Like not even a lot of, like there's not much foot sliding. Everything looks pretty, pretty darn clean actually. Quite impressive. Taking a look at the differences in the files, specifically for the game animation sample in the 5.4 version versus the 5.5 that was just released, there's a bunch of different files. Obviously, it's going to change. So they've updated a bunch of the animations, and they got rid of the crouch work in progress and replaced it with the complete crouch set, which is fantastic. And quite a lot of animations did the same thing with Sprint. Now they have a full Sprint setup. And um, for Run and Walk, those are mostly just going to be the transitions, but it does look like they added quite a lot of walk animations to flesh that out. So walk is, and I did notice walk is performing better than it did before. Um, and then on the jump side, most of this is just adding the sprint transitions. So giving you the transitions as well as on the crouches and the aim offs is just adding it for crouch. So that you now have all of your uh, aim offset animations. And then the traversal, the main thing they added was the midair catches so that you can go, you know, do the traversals while you're in midair. So that isn't just a hack where they just fired animations on the fly. They're actually using, uh, still using the same traversal motion matching logic to pick the animations just like they did for everything else. Yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, really straightforward update. I'll probably make another video if anybody's interested. Leave a comment if you want me to uh, go deeper into some of the sequencer modifications for 5.5. Happy to do that. Um, but uh, thanks for watching and see you next time.